Hi, Joe Rossiter here with this Native Instruments tutorial video. From subtle mix pocketing to creative movement and interactions, sidechain compression is a staple technique for the electronic music producer, no matter the genre. So in this video, I'll break down the basics of sidechain compression, from initial concepts and recommended settings through to a few practical applications. I'll be using Native Instruments compressor plugins in this tutorial, but all the info can be applied to your favorite sidechain capable compressors. So let's start by looking at sidechaining, which is when you use one signal in your mix to trigger processing over another signal. The most common application is sidechain compression. A compressor is an automatic leveling device. When its input signal breaches the threshold you set, the compressor turns that signal down. But you can also use a completely different mix element to tell that compressor what to do. So here's a running synth loop. And I've inserted this compressor on its channel. It's not doing anything at the minute. On another channel, here is this four to the floor kick drum. I'm going to use my DAWs routing to funnel this kick drum signal into the compressor's sidechain input. This routing method will differ depending on which digital audio workstation you use. So now all I need to do is activate this compressor's external sidechain mode with this button and dial in compression. So now, instead of listening to the synth loop, the compressor is listening to the external signal, which is the kick, that I've piped in. And you can see on this meter here that my 4-4 kick is now triggering gain reduction over the synth loop, creating that signature volume pumping effect when each kick hits. Before I show you how to tailor settings in a bit more detail, let's look at a few use cases for sidechain compression. When used subtly, it's a great way to prevent two signals clashing in the mix, kick and bass being the most obvious example. But of course, you can use any mix signal to move another out of the way briefly, which can help momentarily make space for vocals, effects, or any sound you want to poke through the mix. And you can also get creative. Try laying down a 16th note hi-hat pattern, then punch holes in the hat rhythm with another drum sound, such as the kick. The kick drum is usually the most common trigger used for this technique, especially in 4-4 genres, but in practice you can use any mix signal to trigger gain reduction over another. In this example, I'm using this snare to pull down a pad sound. And of course, you can always use extreme settings to get that signature pumping heard in many dance genres. So let's go back to my first example now and look at how parameters can be adjusted to define the response of the sidechain compression. In very simple terms, you can think of threshold as the depth of level ducking. The way you apply this depth depends on the compressor you're using. You can either pull the threshold down, or with some compressors you'll push the input gain up. You can think of the ratio as the strength or amount. The higher the ratio, the more the volume will be reduced. A compressor's attack defines how quickly gain reduction will occur. Once the sidechain signal breaches the threshold you've set, you want the trigger signal to trip gain reduction immediately. So start with the fastest attack time possible and go from there. The release value you set is crucial as it determines how quickly the compressor will reset after gain reduction and allows you to control the tightness and timing of the pump response. A good trick is to dial in very extreme gain reduction, then adjust your release until the groove and timing of the ducking fits the groove of your track. Once that's set up, you can pull back threshold and ratio settings to a less extreme level. All 
Alternatively, as a guide for tempo-specific ducking, you can calculate release times in terms of note length in relation to your project's BPM. All you need to do is divide 60,000 milliseconds by your door's tempo value. So in this case here, it's 60,000 divided by my project's 120 BPM, which gives me 500. Then divide this number by 8 to work out the millisecond value of a 30 second note, which here gives me 62.5 milliseconds. So if I set my release time to 62.5 milliseconds, the ducking is locked exactly in between the groove. Alternatively, I can go back and divide my 500 value by 16, which will give me the millisecond value for a 64th note, which here for my 120 BPM project is 31.25 milliseconds. So to wrap up, let's look at a few ways to go further and customise your sidechain compression even more. First, why not set up sidechain compression, then mix the dry signal back in parallel. This way, you can be a bit more obvious with the pumping, then create a custom blend with the dry signal to rein it all back to taste. Next, as we've already looked at, you generally use an audible signal from your mix to trigger gain reduction over another sound, which is often the kick as we've already seen. But this technique can cause wild jumps in level once that kick is removed from the arrangement. So listen here, as soon as this track hits the breakdown, the sidechain compression is gone. If you want this effect, then great. If you don't want it, simply use an inaudible ghost sidechain trigger. To set this up, duplicate the signal you want to be the trigger. In this case, it's my kick. Route its output out of the main signal path so you don't hear it in the mix. Then use that signal to trigger compression over any other parts, as before. The beauty of this trick is that you can keep the pumping effect running even through quiet breakdown sections so your rhythmic sidechain compression carries on. And also you can sculpt and shape the sidechain signal to customise the compression response. Or you can even program a custom pattern of silent trigger notes to create interesting rhythmic effects. So that's the basics of sidechain compression. Now you understand the concepts, it's up to you to experiment and find your own uses to suit your own style. Until next time, thanks for watching.